We are live. Yes. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> Great. Can everyone see me? Because I can't see myself. <laughs> And that's not important to be able to see myself as long as people could see. Okay, good. So what you should see is great. No, it's sounding good. Nice. Um, can you see the interface on the screen and my studio over here? Okay, great. Cool. Well, welcome to live stream number two. I'm excited to have this opportunity to share the instrument with you uh, so you could hear it. And that's good. Thanks, Allie. Um, the main topic that I'd like to talk about today is legato because that's kind of the foundation of our company in some ways. And one of the reasons that our work is really well used for an instrument like the violin. Um, but if anyone has specific questions about the instrument, I'll do my best to um, use my limited piano chops and and play this stuff in real time. So we recorded 13 legato styles, 24 hours live. <laughs> that would be that would be a feat. I think I could handle about one hour live before I explode. Um, so. Let's make sure everyone can hear, first of all. So what we've done here is recorded about 20,000 samples with, with um, one of the most famous violinists in the world. We rented out um, some awesome studio space in New York City and made sure we had an amazing engineer and everything was super carefully planned. We had 400 pages of score to go through. Um, yeah, definitely. I'll turn the reverb off at one point so you could hear it totally dry. And we set out to record lots of different transition styles, and we made ourselves a technique to be able to do that with the limited time frame. Yeah, this is um, the 88 note control S88, complete control. And at some point, I'll take the webcam and I'll shift it so you could see bird's eye. Um, but for now, I want to be able to just, hey, be able to say hi so I could <laughs> wave to the camera and smile. Anyway, I'll, I'll just talk about legato for a little while, and then I'll do my best to answer any uh, any questions that everyone has. So let me just play through some of the legato styles so that you can hear the different articulations. Um, we have multiple dynamic layers and multiple speeds as well. So right now I'm controlling dynamics with velocity on the keyboard. So when I play really quietly, you'll see soft bow change and soft slur, and that's normal speed. So really quick, I'm going to, and you'll see this is, um, we are continuing to update the instrument, so you're going to see a couple of features that you're not supposed to see <laughs> because the instrument is still being updated. Let's see. Yeah, there are dynamic layers for the legato. Really quick, I'm going to turn off 
a feature that's not quite there yet. We're going to be implementing some new features. I could talk about that too. All right. So here. trying to keep it to the piano layer. So what you just heard was about 90% with 90% accuracy because this is all based on velocity right now, which we could switch. But um, these are the piano layers. So this is Josh, Joshua Bell playing very quietly sl uh, slurs and bow change. Every note to note combination from the lowest note of the, of the violin to the highest note. So those are two legato transition styles right there. Then if I play at a slightly higher velocity, you'll hear the mezzo forte layers as well. So that's mezzo forte, um, bow change, where he changes the direction of the bow when he changes note, and slur, where the n direction of the bow stays the same when he changes the note. Those are the mezzo forte layers, so those are two more styles of legato. Let's listen to the forte layer, where Josh digs in a little bit more with the bow. turn polyphonic legato on too and you can hear it's totally um, possible to play these beautiful realistic octaves and it's super dramatic <laughs> when you play the loud dynamic layer. That's six legato styles right there. And I should point out, too, that you've been hearing bow change and slur going back and forth uh, really seamlessly because when you, when you um, enable some of these intuition modes, we're calling it intuition mode, um, it makes the decision whether to use a bow change or a slur in context based on kind of proportions that we, we thought sounded good. So really quick, before I keep going, I, I noticed a few questions, so I'll try my best to answer them. Kerland, you said, and round robin on legato or fake round robin? Um, there, we didn't record round robin for legato except for same note transitions. And, and that uh, we could talk about those transition styles as well. Um, there's a really awesome collection of same notes here. And... Let's play it.
So I think that's 4x round robin. Sounds like it too. Let's try the really quiet layer. It's harder to play when it's velocity sensitive, but let's give it a shot. I love those rebows. It adds to the realism by a whole lot. Um, to ignore rebowings for an instrument like this would be would be a big mistake. Let me see if I could hunt down the right key switch for this. Um, we also have emotional rebowings, which is kind of like a portamento, uh, just on a same note. It's a scoop, and we recorded those without round robin, but with the different dynamic layers. So. So I've, I've already lost count, but I think we've gone through maybe about eight or nine different transition styles. Um, let me see if there are any questions before I keep going. Right, someone wanted to listen to, that was you, Yuri, um, the instrument without reverb. So let's turn the reverb off and we'll have a naked violin, which is very uncomfortable for me. <laughs> because the microphone is close enough that you, you really hear the uh, intricate sounds, but it's, it's totally worth hearing, and I, I would want to as well if I were in your position. So I'm going to have a drink of water. Okay, so naked. I'm going to change the way this is controlled. Let's see. I'm going to try the Pro Controller config. I might not be totally set up for that. Let's see. There we go. I'm also going to go into the settings and turn the dynamic range down a little bit. So that means when you're going through different dynamics, um, the actual volume is not changing. It's more about the timbre. Yeah, the ember tone, really close mic. We didn't go quite as close with this instrument. Um, we're experimenting with how far we could go back and still retain all of the beautiful quality of the instrument, um, but capture just enough of the, not really the space, but to have a little bit more air around the sound. And, and when you record in a big room like we did, it's easy. Um, it doesn't 
color the sound quite as much. Turn a little more reverb on. I see a couple questions. Is it possible to get Sulpont slurs? We did not record um, legato in that style, but I will play for you the Sulpont samples and you can check them out. I think they are beautiful. agree the intense release really fun to play hey Gregory you said that when you move the pitch wheel you get a very loud noise let's see if I get that noise I hear it too that's something that we could look into. There might be something specific about the control settings. Um, it would be worth trying to see if you get that when you change the control settings up. So going in here and trying a few different parameters, um, that would be something if you could please email us. I'll put this in here. We have an ongoing bug list and we're already working on an update, so it would be perfect timing. Yeah. I'm, I guess I'll do this. Let's see. Support at. Okay. Um, there was another question here. I've got a question about velocity. I simply improvised for about six minutes to get used to playing the violin. Um, I don't. I'm not sure I understand the question, Inner Sphere, but. Um, you should be able to record your velocity just like any other instrument. And if you have here in the control settings, if you're set up for simple keyboard control, then velocity will make a difference with dynamics. Uh, so if you play a very low velocity, you'll get a quiet sample. And if you pr play a very high velocity, you'll get a loud sample. If you go into pro controller configuration, then, um, as you can see here, the long dynamics and the short dynamics are set by the expression pedal. So CC11, in, when you're using the Pro Controller configuration, CC11 will be controlling dynamics. Cool. All right, so we, I'll go back briefly to just talk a little bit more about legato. Um, if, you, if you notice, when you're playing fast, by default, get my mouse out of the way. See how it says legato slur immediate. So there's automatically a setting so that when you play fast, um, you get fast samples. That's Josh playing um, fast legato transitions, and we played them for hours, <laughs> and it, it's worth it. Uh, so we found that the slurs sound really nice when you're playing scales. You could even just go. And depending on uh, some of your tuning settings, you can get some really great um, some really great settings. Yeah, and I could say too that you can program it yourself. So what however you play can be configured that way. If you have the um, if you have the passion to really get in there and tweak it, which some people don't, which is why we wanted to make presets as well. So we have We've gone through at least eight or nine different transition styles, and I should say too that we have 
slurs, uh, fast slurs, quiet and mezzo forte, and we have fast bow changes, quiet, mezzo forte, and uh, super intense forte. And let's see. Let's try to get those going. So we see here, legato speed immediate is set by that key switch, right. So let's play, I'm gonna play for you some of the fast legato transitions and they're, they're designed to be used when you're playing fast so they, the sound results will vary. If you're trying to play a slow melody, it might sound a little funky if you're using the fast samples, but it's always worth a shot. You have, what's cool about this is you have 12 or more different options to go between one note and another. Um, so you have, if you don't like the way one transition sounds, you could use 11 other transitions. So right now I'm pressing the key switch that forces the instrument to play the immediate samples, the fast samples. So the bow immediate at forte or double forte sounds awesome if you're doing a melody that's very pointed. Ba 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 bum ba bum ba bum. So kind of like this. I should say too, and I even forgot about this because <laughs> I guess as time passes, I forget how in depth the sampling process was. We even recorded faster rebos. So if you play a normal rebo, that's what that sounds like. we're above 12 <laughs> and I, I could probably go back to the website and add some extras um, because there's there's actually more than 12 transition styles if you factor in all the different speeds but so far we've gone through the main transition styles we have slur and bow and we have that's true yeah you can make trills or tremolo with rebo um, hi Ruben thanks for the message um, so you can go through and uh, see that there are different speeds of legato and there's different transition styles. So you have bow and slur. And I can't believe I forgot to mention we have portamento. So this is what portamento sounds like. something that might not be well advertised because it's one of those buried um, awesome treasure features that 
um, we do put in the manual, but it's buried in there. We recorded Joshua playing, excuse me, larger than octave transitions as well. So if you go and you connect a larger than octave melody, you will hear, um, for the most part, real samples of him playing, playing that up to two octaves. So check it out. So in a minute, I'll move on and talk a little bit about some of the other articulations. But I wonder, does anyone have questions? Are there any other questions that I can answer as I drink a little bit of water? So part two of the walkthrough will be ready um, very, very soon. Um, that's where we talk about intuition and we get into the control page a little bit and, and talk about that um, I just have a few more little um, details that I need to put into those videos so it's a good reminder that people are actually waiting for that Brent you are asking if Blakis and Friedlander are getting an update and the answer is yes I am super excited and energized to take all of the stuff that we learned as we have uh, journeyed through the last two years developing this Joshua Bell violin and many of the developments will find their way into the ISS series um, especially these intuition features that in incorporate smart scripts and make it easier to get a great sound out of the box without having to control every little thing and on top of that I'm going to be going through the sample sets for all these instruments and going through it with a fine tooth comb and seeing if I could, what, what everything that can be improved will be improved. And it seems impossible to play anything that doesn't come out sounding like a real violin performance. That's, a, that, that's great praise. Thank you. That means a lot. Um, yeah, we put a lot of work into that just to make sure it sounds as good as it can out of the box. Boxed versions, yeah. That's, that would be really fun to have a boxed version of the Joshua Bell violin. Something that we, we will be talking to uh, distributors about at some point. Right now, it's only available on our website, um, but we might open it up for wider distribution at some point in the future. So, talking about legato, I want to bring up a special feature of this instrument uh, if you go to the harmonics, we recorded real harmonics. So, and this was Joshua's idea also. So um, I, I should pause and mention too that this, these sessions were unbelievable. For about 12 hours, Jonathan and I sat in the main studio quietly just listening to this great violinist perform samples. And um, the sampling process is normally pretty dull. And I can't say that 12 hours of sampling was um, exactly riveting. But every sample that he played was its own performance. He put his heart and soul into these samples. And you could really hear the results when you play it. Ruben, thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of work. And it's like a huge weight lifted off 
of our shoulders to be able to share it with everyone and finally show off the, um, all of the work we've been putting into it. Has the playing response improved, meaning the perceived delay? Rob, I can't say that it's a debatable thing, and I know it's really subjective, and some people want a snappier performance time, and some people want that um, beautiful legato sound, and there's a little bit of a give and take. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, cinematic strings, those legato samples are ridiculously slow, and they're also ridiculously beautiful. And then there are other libraries that you could tell they're prioritizing the performance quality, and the legato transition is super fast. And the first company that comes to mind is Vienna Symphonic Library. So there's a give and a take. And with the Joshua Bell violin, we decided to go a little bit further towards that snappy side so that it feels really responsive. And so before I keep on talking, because <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that, I'll play some of these harmonic samples. Oh, yeah, slowest legato award. <laughs> I love that violin. That's a good point. I think with the fluffy audio, you could control the length of the legato. I could be wrong about that. So we have harmonic slurs, harmonic bows, and these beautiful and eerie harmonic slides, which are really fun to play. And personally, I've used them in multiple film scores, and people love... Uh, the, the directors I've worked with always open their eyes really wide when they hear the uh, harmonic slides. They're beautiful and eerie. Yeah, I agree. That reactor um, instrument is very, very responsive. Yeah. Um, yes, to solo. Very much like a theremin when you hear that. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to play just a little for a little bit longer and see if any questions come up. And then before I'm finished here, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a surprise and demo a new, an, a new MIDI controller that we just got. That is, I've been playing for hours and staying up way too late every night just playing it. Um, so before I get ahead of myself, I'll play a little bit of melody here. One real benefit of having a choice between legato transitions and being able to go from piano slur to piano bow or from piano slur to uh, mezzo forte bow or, or whatever, all these different combinations, it allows you to repeat, to make a melody that has repeated notes without giving things away. You have so many different options. Um, so, for example, 
Let's see. I'm going to bring the dynamics up a little bit so there's a little more range. So I see a lot of questions coming in. Um, pr uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your name, but H Hakan, um, you said not touche, is it? Oh, I see. Yeah, if you could rephrase your question, I think I know what you mean, but please do. Um, how to connect CC11. CC11, well, if you go to this control page here, you can connect anything to any CC. So it's just a matter of how deep you want to go into tweaking land. Um, however, I could say now that simple keyboard control does not make use of CC11 because we made that, we designed it for people who have small keyboards and might not have a lot of like MIDI dials and knobs and just want to be able to play the instrument and have it sound good. That's what simple keyboard control is. If you go to pro configure or pro controller config, then uh, off, off the bat, dynamics will be controlled by CC11. So that's one way to control it. Or you can go in and put any parameter you want to CC11. Um, you said, yeah, I think it would be really good for gypsy music. Um, DeSolo, you said, did, did it just roll in legato? If you could rephrase that. Yeah, CC11 is often controlled with an expression pedal. Yep. Uh, Curland, dynamic layers on sustains. We had four dynamic layers on normal sustains. Some cases there's two dynamic layers. Some cases there's there's even five. But let's go back to the main screen and you could uh, let's just listen to sustains. main dynamic layers. We recorded a really quiet piano layer that has a gradual attack. And then we recorded a mezzo forte that has just a normal attack and just a nice sort of vanilla sound. And then a forte that has an immediate attack and gets a little bit more bite and the vibrato is a little bit deeper. Um, then there's a double forte layer that really digs in and attacks the string that's super dramatic. <laughs> It's not, um, you said a new MIDI controller. It, uh, I'll show it to you. Got it. Yeah, uh, I'll show you the MIDI controller in a minute. I'm j I'll finish a couple other questions and then I'll bust out this little surprise that has been a super joy in my life over the last few days. Um, to solo, right. Yeah, the, uh, when you play, it could be this, that when you play really fast, it automatically triggers legato slur immediate. So let's see.
let me know if you catch it again. So uh, literature, you're saying that your UI is broken. That's something that we're very concerned about. So please email us and we will figure it out. Um, we've gotten, we have, we've had a couple of emails with people who had the UI all of a sudden stop working and we have to figure that out immediately and figure out if it's um, an issue on our end or something new with a version 5.7 of contact that just came out because I think that came out just a week after we released the instrument. All right, so as long as this is still working, let's see, this is an instrument one uh, from an amazing company called Artifon. And Ali, if you are there, if you could link in uh, the website for Artifon. This instrument is so much fun to play, and it's, it looks a lot like a guitar. And over here in the frets, when you play a note, it's controlled by aftertouch. So, and then over here is a CC74. So there's there's a lot of CCs going on, and I configure this instrument to respond to volume this way. So I could play a little bit for you. I made a super mega violin that you could hear. Uh, there's two extra strings. So. I wish this mic wasn't so directional, but uh, sorry, you probably haven't heard me the last few minutes. I need, yeah. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Right. Lots of questions. Okay, so this is a really fun controller and it brings out some of the possibilities of the instrument that just a regular keyboard wouldn't do. Uh, it just has all this responsiveness. You could also play pizzicato. So I configure the instrument 
to respond to quick release, which you could do on the keyboard as well. So. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> There we go. One benefit to having an instrument like this, since it's string based you could play chords a lot easier and i'm still getting to know how this works especially considering i don't actually play the violin but check it out So that's the instrument one, and we are going to be making some templates so that if you have the instrument one and you have Joshua Bell violin, uh, you'll have some built-in ways of just making it sound amazing right off the bat. Uh, yeah, someone said polylegato. This instrument, uh, well, first of all, the instrument one is built in for polylegato since each of these strings is its own MIDI channel. So when you're playing the lowest G string, you're playing a totally different instance of contact. So if you want to, you could play a six note chord. And then volume is controlled here. But the same could be done, or something similar, with the instrument itself, um, using a regular MIDI controller. So if you turn poly legato on, you could do pretty much the same thing. Let's try. Yeah, it's really fun to play in poly mode, and um, it's very intuitive. So basically what's happening is you're hearing legato transitions, but if you hold a note down, that note will stay. You'll hear the, hear the legato transition, and that note stays. 
so you can play as many notes as you want. Yeah, I hear you. It sounded nicer on the instrument one. There's something really natural about playing, especially with the violin, it's obvious, playing um, on different strings. So is Joshua Bell Violin MPE ready? In many senses, yes, it is ready, especially because we went through the effort to make such a complete uh, configuration page here where you can control and um, assign any articulation to any CC, aftertouch, pitch bend. It's super controllable. Um, the thing that, the limiting factor for an instrument like a uh, seaboard or a instrument or even instrument one for that matter is um, there is no real morphing between dynamics in this instrument. So when you play a piano sample, you could bring the dynamics up, but you're, what you're hearing there is volume. You're not hearing it morph into a forte. And, and the opposite is true too. So if you play, But there are a number of ways to be able to construct your own phrase that has lots and lots of dynamics. And you could use the uh, soft and, and harsh releases that we made. So I'm doing that with aftertouch. So if I press lightly with aftertouch, I get a soft release. And then when I press hard with aftertouch, I get a harsh release. so on. There's also contour samples, and I haven't even gotten into those, but there are samples that have built-in dynamic qualities, whether they are crescendos, decrescendos of varying lengths, as, we as well as um, samples that swell up and go back down and also go the opposite direction, get decrescendo and crescendo back up. Can you make uh, an ensemble or a virtual second violin here? Um, like the Erhu. There is no ensemble function in this instrument, but you are welcome to make your own. You could load many Joshua Bells and do a little bit of pitch bending, and that would be a Joshua Bell ensemble. Or you could um, simply turn poly on and play chords, and you have a Joshua Bell ensemble of sorts there as well. Um, right, yeah, that's a good point. That is. The only limitation so far, we have a set of phase locked samples that we may incorporate into a future version of the instrument, um, but it became too complex. And so we, we wanted to release this first and have the standard instrument with all of its expressive capabilities just like this. Um, Larvigator is asking if the release is a separate sample, and yes, it is. There are normal releases, so if you're just playing a normal melody, I'm going to turn poly legato off. So when you lift, it may be subtle, but you are hearing a release sample that is triggered when you lift a note. And then if you want a special sort of release, then that could be triggered any way you want. But by default, um, the releases are triggered with aftertouch. So if you have a keyboard that doesn't have aftertouch, you could assign it to anything that you want, a key switch or a pitch bend, whatever would work. But right now, uh, on a keyboard that is aftertouch compatible, if you play lightly the aftertouch, you will get a soft release. which is beautiful at the end of a phrase.
those are the soft releases. And then when you press hard with aftertouch, you get these dramatic releases, which are really fun and also work well at the end of phrases. Thank you, Gregory. We will um, definitely look into that, and we have a whole list of bugs that we're working on already. So that'll be great. There, there will be a 1.01 release soon, and um, we we had about 25 or 30 um, different features, features and bugs that we wanted to address, and that sounds like one that we will prioritize right away. So we're coming up to an hour now, and I want to make sure that any questions get addressed. So if you have any last minute questions before we go, I'd like to keep this to an hour so that I, I can still talk. I'm not used to talking this much, um, but <laughs> will the 1.01 be an intense or soft release? It will be a very gentle release. Let's, let's not be intense with our releases. <laughs> So Larvigator is saying, uh, you just don't understand how many release samples would have to be recorded, considering that the player could lift up a finger at any moment. We recorded thousands of release samples, um, and we, we only used a small subset of the ones that we recorded. But yeah, there are, there are normal releases, and I guess if you count the number of notes in the range, it comes out to, let's just count them, 48. It's about 60, 60 notes. So we have 60 normal releases, 60 harsh releases, and 60 soft releases. So about 180 different releases that you could trigger at any moment. Gentle on the aftertouch to start with. Good idea. Well, we have about one minute before I go. And in the absence of any additional questions or requests, I'll noodle around a little bit more. Maybe I will play some pizzicato samples on the keyboard since I haven't done that yet. And they're always fun. It's my pleasure. Thank, thank you for that intersphere. I'm going to change it to keyboard control. Lots of dynamics and rad robins for the shorts. Um, why not play a few of the other shorts as well? Um, we have staccato, spiccato, ricochet, and pizzicato. You just heard the pits. And Sp spiccato has four round robin and three dynamics. Staccato. Same with the staccato. Four round robin and three dynamics. The pizzicato, if I'm not mistaken, are eight round robin and four dynamics, because we have Bartok pits. And then 
then we also have ricochet samples, and that's something that we've never done before with any of our strings. Josh recorded um, ricochets that were beautiful. They bounced along the bow. So you have, you could play those full samples, and then you could play them separated as well. So between staccato, spiccato, and ricochet, there are lots of, uh, there's lots of different options for short articulations. shorts are a lot of fun and I have to say I'm so obsessed with legato that I tend to just stay there all the time but the short samples here are really something special and maybe the next time we do a live stream I'll focus on them a little bit more and talk about them in, in more detail so before I go I'll make sure there aren't any other questions it looks like literature had his his or her question answer answered um, oh thank you very much Danny I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Uh, we are happy to do these live streams, and as long as there's interest, we will continue doing them. So um, if anyone has requests for next time, feel free to email us, and I'll put our email right there. And yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that what we're going to do is have these small topics for each live stream but then we can go off into any tangent that, that people are asking for. Um, oh, was Joshua Bell fairly open to the idea of sampling his violin? Um, yes, he was very open to it, and that's the only reason why we were able to do it. It, it all came from him. Uh, Josh wanted, he's very interested in technology and video games and virtual reality, all these cool new cutting edge technological things. So he wanted to make a sampled version of, of his instrument and they reached out to us and that's what started the collaboration and we spent about three years um, first going through all the possibilities and development pre-development and and then getting into the actual recording process and and post-production it took about three years um, Jim you're asking if any updates are planned for the Freelander violin and yes we are now fully in update mode and taking all of these new things that we've learned over the last few years with the Joshua Bell violin and bringing them to life in our Intimate String solo series. And we have some other Intimate Strings surprises to share sometime soon. Um, yes, the short samples without reverb. Why don't we do that before, before signing off? That could be kind of my last thing. And I'll answer any last questions that come on in. Um, yes, Josh did enjoy it. He, he was very intense with it. He is so focused. It was really impressive to see how he could remain focused for a six-hour session just straight. All right, so here are the short samples without reverb.
finally, Ricochet. Dry as a bone, super uncomfortable to play like that, but I, I totally get you want to hear, hear the instrument um, in its naked form. So thanks everyone for watching, and we plan to do another video. If anyone has suggestions or questions for the next one, we will figure out what topic we want to focus on and fully expect to go onto a bunch of different tangents, as always. Cool. All right, signing off now. Bye, everyone.